All right, Brandon got us another video for Code. I on a Koji's most insane gamble yet. Episode five, season three. Let's see what he has to say. The craziest thing about this week's Classroom of the Elite episode is just the insanity of the bet when you really take a step back. Because on one hand, if we end up succeeding with this big gamble that we... I honestly don't feel threatened by this gamble at all. Like, yes, expulsion is on the line, but this is Ayano Koji we're talking about. The fucking main character. Does it make sense for him to get expelled? Not really. What happens if he gets expelled? What, we're going to focus from the fucking perspective of fucking EK and Yamauchi in, in Class 1C and their rise? No. Like, and he's so fucking competent. Yes, I understand that expulsion is a danger, but it's Ayano Koji we're talking about. And the fact that we've already discovered that there's other ways to get an expelled, like an expelled student back with private points. So even, I, I would say if Ayano Koji actually gets expelled, it's of his own, own volition, right? Why would he want to do that? I don't know. To, it's, it's, it's just a fucking mind game. Maybe he wants to get expelled and then he, he'll have like someone else on the side like K that had private points like transfer so that she can like buy him back for some like double mind games. I'm not sure. But like I've never thought for a single moment that the expulsion would really matter. We end on Arzu ends up she gone. She yeeted out of this school, which honestly is a W for us. On the flip side, should he lose, which you might want to say, well, he's on a coach. He's not. I just lose. don't I see mean, it. The exams it's no laughing matter. I mean, it, there is possibilities for this. Also, good point. Arisu is the one being expulsion. Arisu is the one that's getting expelled. Not Ayano Koji, right? Ayano, no, no, what was the bet exactly? It's that on the special exam, if Arisu wins, sorry, if, if Ayano Koji wins, Arisu will, will just expel herself. But if Ayano Koji wins, I, sorry, if Arisu wins, then it's like his secret's out, right? It's, it's just a secret. It's like, oh, he's a puppet master. But like, how would they prove it so easily? How, 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 would, that, how would they prove it so easily? It's like, and isn't, isn't even a problem that if he gets exposed as a classy mastermind? Why is it a problem? Why is it an actual problem that he's no longer a mob character because of his freedom? Because he just wants to lay low and just enjoy school life here? If he gets exposed, does that bring his father coming to get him even better? I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like being exposed as a mastermind, is it that big of a deal? Is it really just going to ruin his entire life at the school? I'm not really sure. This author to go the route of him losing, which would then not expel him. We're not going to go that easy, generic way to write a say. No, it's he would get exposed. We have the yes, exposed. Of yes, expelled yes, yes. versus exposed. For him being exposed as the mastermind behind his class. We've been keeping that a secret all this time because obviously he just wants it. Like his only reason for being at the school is to get away from his dad because this school is so special in terms of how outside connections can't really reach him, which is kind of kept because the dad apparently fucking visited him in season two. And apparently, maybe, maybe he has like his spies in here too, which might be Yuki Murakese right here. Just kidding. But exposure, other people understanding that he was the mastermind. Would it be that big of a deal? Would it really just be that just like life changing to him? Is something that I didn't think we'd have to consider for a long time, given how he's manipulated these chess pieces. But that's how they end this. And honestly, to me, it just feels like a little minor hindrance at the end of the day. And I guess it would make his school life a little bit more annoying because other people would realize that and start targeting him. But I mean, all the big players already fucking know that Anakoji is the mastermind. So if other NPCs start to know that, like, what? Uh, like, we already have a target on our back from, like, the fucking queen of the school. Fucking Yakuza boss Ryuen. We already dealt with them. Fucking Ichinose is our friend. Like, uh, Nagumo, Manabu, they already fucking have an idea. Even the fucking class B teacher understands. So, like, all the top players know what are gunning for us. So you're telling me other mob characters knowing too is a fucking danger? I just don't know how this would be such a huge deal. As much as my gut says, well, he couldn't be exposed because a lot of the charm about him manipulating things behind the scenes would go away. At the same time, even if he was exposed, there's an entire way that he could rebury it and there would oh. be certain people that would still think certain things. But yes, I mean, my gut does say that he wouldn't have to worry, but the gamble's still there. And that's quite exciting on top of us just getting an each of those episode which is pretty much three-fourths of it focused on her and her stealing <laughs> plot line. And even if... Not gonna lie, the stealing plot line was fucking dumb, but I understand there's a cultural difference. So stealing here is pretty much just seen as like a grave crime. I understand that, It yes. only was like a $300 hair clip. I mean, goddamn, they don't play around. I don't care if it's a $1,000 hair clip. Like, it's fucking... Uh, 
It's so trivial in the grand scheme of things, but in Japan, apparently you go to jail for like how many years? Like 10 years for minor shoplifting? That shit over there, but I don't uh, even you know. know what? Great, great stuff. I have a full live reaction to this. Check him out on Patreon. Episode, though, over on my Patreon. So if you want to see my full length of thoughts as we watch today's episode, it's over there if you're interested. Now, this was probably the strongest episode of the season. Honestly, I think the past two or three episodes have definitely been a step above. I think what. And what I hear is that every episode after this episode is going to be peak after peak. So everything so far in code has been kind of set up. Whatever the intro arc was, while I don't find it to be a waste, what we're currently in, especially with this whole student council president plot line, much more interesting. And the idea of rumors and how they spread like wildfires is completely believable. Everyone's been in school at some point. Rumors spread whether true or not. And the interesting thing is that a lot of what's being spread is true or just skew to look a certain way. <laughs> Ichinos is a criminal? I mean... I mean... She was she, she was found not guilty. The the shop, the shoplift, the, the the store department head boss or whatever was like, alright, we're not gonna fucking charge you for anything. They're like, oh, our boys. Also, you know what's hilarious? The hilarious thing is... The school already knows your, like, history when you apply so that they can, like, assign you to the proper class, right? So, like... For example, Susanne seems to be amazing and competent and super smart, but we know that she fucking sucks at leadership capabilities at the start of first year, right? So they're like, yeah, you're a fucking defect, class D. We don't care how smart you are. Hon Ichinose is kind of the same because she seems so fucking perfect. So you're telling me the school already knew? They're like, all right. <laughs> Ichinose, we know that you actually try to steal. Sorry, you did steal a hair clip for your little sister. So you're going to put you in B class. <laughs> That's your defect. The school actually knew about that? The school actually knew about that? The school knows about Koji? Like, well, the... Isn't, isn't the school's, like, principal Arisu's dad? Right? And he was from the white room. So I, I think it makes sense. Interested in so-and-so, even though there's a lot more to that. Or the idea that she's a criminal. And I think what's interesting <laughs> criminal. is, well, I expected the majority of the class to still stick behind her. I thought what they were going to build into was that we were going to have a situation where, like, one or two of the classmates would not feel that way. And even if class unity was more or less back to where mm. it was, we're still going to have a couple of idiots like in last week's episode who just decides to spread, you know, it's kind of like throwing gasoline on the flames like they were doing last week. And instead, all is well. It's crazy because like each of these class, the unity is so fucking tight. Class B is just ruled not through violence like Ryuan. Not through whatever they're doing with Katsuragi and Arisu in Class A. Not through fucking using tools and a framework to manipulate people behind the scenes like Anako in Class D. Well, before, now we're C. I, I, Ichinose's friends in her group is just... They're all friends. They're all really nice, wholesome, like, great people. They cheer her on. Ichinose's like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm a criminal. But despite that, will you still accept me? And everyone's like, we'll be there for you, queen. We're there for you. Woo! So like, I thought that Arisu's plan actually backfired because if, if, if her goal was to pretty much destroy Ichinose and destroy everything around her. In fact, this just emboldened their friendship and unity even more. But at the end of the day, Arisu didn't give a fuck about Ichinose. None of that shit mattered. Her target at the end of the day was Anakoji and I got baited again. Well, that ends well, or so it seems, because basically Arsu as well as Anokoji were working together in order mm -hmm. to get everything that's happened. And I love how when he interacts with a character, right? It's kind of funny when you think about it, right? Because Horikita, we haven't really talked with her much, and she was. Susanne has been very absent this season, dude. She's fucking nowhere. A lot of what season one and two is focused on, but there's so. Well, season one. The director of the anime had a fetish for season eight. That's why she was everywhere. Season two, even in season two, I felt like she was kind of definitely less a representation. Season three, where the fuck is she? She just kind of talked to Kushida in another episode one and kind of fucked off. How many characters that he interacts and manipulates? One point he's talking with Arsu, one point he'll be talking with Ichinos. Hell, at one point he'll, he'll just be talking with everyone and we'll just casually end on a scene of him saying, I'll give you half of my points going mm. forward because he values the information that she gives. 50% cut? Not even 60, 40, not even 70, 50% cut? And that's how valuable her informant networking is? I mean, 
That is kind of crazy, but at the end of the day, I, I, based on what Anakoji said, he is still trying to get her expelled. Like, the entire point for him was just to know how valuable her information was, yeah. and clearly he thinks it's pretty damn valuable. And Apparently. Like, this boy, I swear to God, Anakoji is playing 12 games of chess simultaneously without yes, breaking a sweat. Because we're, uh, that's a perfect example. That That is what he just said, 12 games of chess. That is the perfect analogy, because... What I see from the anime is the one game of chess that is like present in front of me, right? I see each, I see Anakoji playing just one single game of chess. But what I don't see is all the shit happening in the background, the 11 other chess games that is happening simultaneously that leads to just me getting mind fucked. Like what? You were fucking doing this behind the scenes with the Arisu? What? Kamuro was fucking lying? The beer was fucking fake? What? Each no say didn't fucking matter? It's like, oh, oh my God. He lets it go down. Vice principal too. Sorry, vice president. He fucking he, he fucking spread the rumors on behalf of Anakoji, right? Down to the last second that you can make a move and all the pieces move in the best way you've ever seen. Not because he needed that time to think, but just because he wanted to make you sweat more. I love this show and how I think it's definitely on the right track for season three. I did not hate the beginning of this season. Some people did. Some people called it boring. I thought it was a lot more boring than what we've seen before. But now that the pieces are really lined up, into mm -hmm. some exciting territory. But all the Anakoji stuff, as great as it was, the star attraction is probably Ichino's and her plotline. Even if, whatever your opinion is of stealing and what she did in that moment. I think that because I'm a filthy North American that is uh, not a pristine, uh, you know, a respectable and an honorable Japanese citizen, of course I'm gonna think shoplifting is fucking dumb. Of course it's trivial. Everyone fucking does it. It is the, like, it's, it's like the same thing as, like, fucking downloading music on Pirates Bay a long time ago. Fucking pirating anime, pirating movies. It, it just seems like such minor, trivial, not even crime. But in the context of Japan, where honor is everything, and they have such a deep focus on, you know, your honor, the respect you bring to your family. If you steal, that goes against the moral code. Like, yeah, I get it. I get it. I don't return the shopping cart. That shit's mine. I mean, it's it's understandable how it screwed up, especially they all had strong moral compasses there. But uh, honestly, I guess I'm just so desensitized to anime because I'm just always assuming I was like, oh, rush to the hospital, Chuck Coon got her. Yeah, me, just me too. Passed out from exhaustion because the mom was. Like, I thought she just fucking died. Working so damn hard to buy her kid, who's such an angel, a birthday present because she never asked for anything. So of course she's gonna work her ass off to do it. Honestly, I thought you know it's kind of bad because okay. if I was in her situation, I would have been able to out navigate that mom. I'm gonna say it right. I'm just playing. Mom wouldn't have known that I stole anything, bro. Lil sis wouldn't even have peeked anything, dude. They wouldn't have fucking known anything. In fact, I would have had another gift for the mom. You know what I would have fucking done? Not just a hair clip for the sister. I would have gotten a fucking gift for the mom too. I ain't just stealing that hair clip. I'm stealing like two hair clips, dude. Right now, all she really had to do was just like, it's pretty easy. She could have said like, oh, you know, I actually ended up getting this job. Even though if a sure. lot of places aren't actually hiring kids her age, there's just ways to lie yourself out of that situation. Sure. But she's too nice. She's too good of a- She's too innocent. She is not a piece of shit like me. She is too good. And honestly, all this time we were wondering, what is Ichinose's defect? She is seemingly so perfect, yet she's only in B class. What's wrong with her? And it's revealed that her crime is minor shoplifting. She is still perfect, in my opinion. Of all the characters that exist in this show, I think she is so wholesome. She is so positive. She is so normal, I guess. But like this defect, it doesn't even fucking count to me, in my opinion. A person. So instead, we get the six month shut in arc, which, goddamn, I was not expecting that. But like, yeah, you can make the argument. Okay, I mean, it's it's just a hair clip. As much as she wants it, there's other things that she'll. It's but when you really take a step back, the first thing she's ever asked for, hell yeah, grab that shit and run. And she did it successfully. <laughs> the only issue was that the mom saw right through it. I, I don't know, man. Like this, give the damn. <laughs> you should have gave a mom a different present, dude. I, like I told you, I'm stealing one paper. I'm not stealing one clip, dude. I'm stealing fucking two if I was each notes. And I, I would have still came with some bullshit lighters, you know, fucking coerced mom to thinking, yeah, I got you. Don't worry, I got you. Get her hair 
entire clip. That's all I'm saying, but that's just me. But it provided for a really interesting arc because rather than going this like, oh, she just get the, the thrill of stealing or this or that, or she got caught by the police. Instead, it was much more painful. She didn't get exposed by the authorities. She didn't get exposed by this. Instead, nah. she ruined that whole dynamic. That clip was forever tainted when the sister's crying on the ground, the mom's yeah, furious, that's... and you feel like shit. It was a very effective backstory, and honestly, I mean, I'm not surprised with the way she explained it, because hell, I was like, fuck it, steal that damn hair clip. Steal two <laughs> if you want it. That's what I am saying, dude! <laughs> she have stole more than just a fucking clip! You guys deserve the damn world based on how... You guys treat each other like it's it was just a very sad backstory without being out of oh my mom died this is why i had to turn no it's just like the way they explain yeah i thought that the mom had like a fucking lethal disease and the only way to save her was to go to the school and earn enough points to get the best doctors or some shit to like fund that but no it was it was hair clip all right no, we didn't have a lot but we had each other and for the first time you know my sister wanted something mom mm -hmm. worked herself to the point of being in the er and then i froze and i made a mistake she took full ownership there was no excuse the only mistake she made was taking only one clip i still stand by her let's fucking go each no say she was explaining the train of thought but how she deserved what she got and i love the fact that the class collectively was like you got nothing to apologize for it was just a very well done backstory mm -hmm. and at that point when the unification of the class was not destroyed but emboldened even more in front of arisu and when arisu made that face of like discern i thought that she just won and arisu's plan backfired turns out that was never her intention she did not give a fuck and honestly i think it goes to show that while there's definitely a lot of character perspectives and and i guess it's not that crazy if you think about it that the b class students accepted each note that well because if you think about it do you think that if the same shit happened in our class, that other idiots like Yamauchi, <laughs> you know, would respond the same way? I don't think so, <laughs> because we are true defects. You know, B class, they're very normies. They're very wholesome. And you know what? I think being normie and wholesome is kind of boring. I'm not going to lie. Like, I do love Ichinose, but sometimes compared to other characters in this show where they're fucking batshit crazy, that's a lot more interesting to me. Like, Kushida, I hate her. She's a demon, but she is spicy because you never know what kind of shit you're going to get with her, dude. So, like, our class, yes, they're the classroom of the fucking defects. They're all idiots. But at the same time, at least a pretty entertaining moment because they're idiots. Sometimes it's hard to remember who's doing this and who's manipulating who. Sometimes episodes like these are really important to really get inside a character's head and just focus on them and no one else for a bit and let us really feel like we understand them on a personal level as I know Koji's actually manipulating them all for his grand plans. I'm very impressed with this week's episode. I was Huh, you didn't talk about the teachers and getting involved with Nagumo coming in because I felt like, um... The teacher's involvement and in how they're going to now be a lot more strict on rumors and other shit like this. Like, I thought that Arisu was indirectly implying that this was also part of her plan. Like, no, it was never to make you look bad, Ichinose. It was to bring this attention to make Nagumo's, like, Nagumo to play a card, but also get the teachers involved. And somehow this will set up some shit for the future. I don't know. Maybe because the teachers are now involved, they'll make up some rules to the to point, I don't know, to, like, restrict some behaviors in the future. I'm not completely sure if it matters, if the teachers understand, but it was pretty interesting how Nagumo did have to get involved here. I was impressed last week. I mean, as infuriating as episode four was last week in terms of the whole just goddamn characters like that exposing rumors. It was nice that the student council president comes in and pretty much buries that shit. Like, pretty much saying, hey, malicious rumors, true or not, they're done. No more. It's so funny, because, like, the teachers in Say, after Nagawa says, like, no more rumors, guys. We can't have that shit going on our school. And the teacher's like, yeah! We are... This school has the utmost highest moral code. Ethics matter. And I'm like, bitch. A student got fucking waterboarded straight up war crime at your campus again they didn't catch it so it doesn't matter but it's fucking hilarious when the teachers start talking about how like moral code of, code of ethics like what are you fucking talking about sir but then again if you don't get caught doesn't matter you can do anything fuck murder a student if you want just hide it don't let us know more of that and i think if you break the rules like if you start spreading <laughs> negative shit about people now i mean you're probably pretty close to getting kicked out of the school Nah, well, Yamauchi continued to Wait, I don't even know if that was Yamauchi anymore. No, it wasn't. It was never Yamauchi. That was Iona Koji rumors. Never mind. Yamauchi's just a fucking idiot. But would he continue to do this shit? I don't know. People are saying that Yamagata is popping off in the next episode's preview. And other people are commenting in my video that, yo, Yamagata is about to peak next episode. It's like, oh, no.
Oh no, someone stop this dude. Even if they don't do it immediately, like you probably go from zero strikes to two strikes real quick and as a say third strike and you're out, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot happened. I wonder if that rumor behavior is gonna impact Kushida because we know that Kushida, you know, is pretty much is the queen of rumors in the past too, right? And Aona Koji's plan right now was to get the shit involved, right? And she's and he's trying to get her expelled still, you know, based on you know his dialogue at the very end after after talking about how she's a valuable informant, fifty percent of the cut, but also this is still to get her expelled. So now with the teachers away, with this new system where spreading fake rumors is bad, and knowing Kushida, how would this play to our hands to get her expelled? I'm not completely sure. Could we make her do something like that? But she's pretty smart too. I, I feel like she wouldn't fall for such an easy trap. This was a very good episode. It still continues to crack me up that Aino Koji is the way he is. I don't think I can recall him ever smiling. The man just blank slate, same... He has never smiled. Yeah, I, I don't think in the anime there has ever been a moment that he smiled. Suzune actually did smile in that pool episode. Suzune actually does smile, but I don't know, Koji, did he ever smile? I don't think so. In vocal range the entire time and it's- But in the light novel, his thoughts are so dumb and so stupid and like a normal human sometimes because he's so horny. I feel like in the light novel, he probably does smile based on the shit that we hear from his perspective, but I'm not sure. Kind of hilarious when you think of what everyone's going through. But I mean, bro was literally saying like, oh my God, if I was a girl in front of Hirata right now, I would be screaming and going, yeah. So it's like, I don't know, man. This was without doubt my personal favorite classroom of the elite episode of this season, but let me know what you thought down. My favorite episode is still the end of the mountain arc with the revelation of the expulsions and Nahuma versus Manabu. But he's right. This episode was fantastic. I thought that I, everything I knew, again, guys, please give Mr. Brandon a like on his video. Subscribe to his channel if you'd like to. But I thought that it was all Yamagod and Arisu and maybe even Kushida with the rumors. But the fact that it was Anakoji again, like I even said in the intro that who could this be? Like, do you think Anakoji is intentionally self-sabotaging to like, I don't know, do the same shit he did in season one and two? It just doesn't make sense because the framework is already up. Turns out it was never about that. So it's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I can't believe it was the, the easiest answer in front of me, but I just didn't assume right. So it's like, fuck, that sucked. But whatever, this show is always so fun to guess with, right? And like moving forward, with these rumors being at play, with Kushida still trying to get expelled, with the line that at the end of the mountain arc, that many series of expulsions, not just in one year, but multiple different years in different classes gonna happen. Next couple episodes coming up should be really interesting. And I can't believe this dude pretty much made Susan have a fever in season one, right? Pretty much got K waterboard in season two. And now he it just breaks down each no say, just makes her ball. He just stays in her fucking apartment until she just confesses her sins. <laughs> so that he can break her down and then she can give him a fucking Valentine's chocolate. He keeps fucking getting away with it, dude. Fucking sociopathic Riz.